On this episode of Cycle Talk, we have the Harley Davidson Street 500, the first learner approved bike from the heavyweight American manufacturer, a Triumph Tiger Classic, an interview with five gloves, but let's kick it off with the 2015 track focused Yamaha R1 and R1M. the first R1 came out and really did set the standard for the sporting road bike. Then in 2010 the first cross-plane crankshaft R1 was released and it was really aimed more towards the road side of the sports bike rather than the track. This is the first major update from that bike and still uses a cross-plane crankshaft. The 2015 model is the most advanced ever and is the most track focused ever. We're at Sydney Motorsport Park to find out what it's like. Today we're here at Sydney Motorsport Park to try out the new R1. Last time I rode a big bike with the CBO Honda at Island Inn and I'm really looking forward to riding this. It's, I've learned it's one of the most technically advanced R1s of modern time, so well, modern sports bike, so it'll be interesting to see how this thing goes around this track. thoughts of the bike? Awesome, awesome. Probably the most, it's definitely angry that the traction control, brakes, slip clutch, everything was worked there. I'm really impressed, so. This is the all new engine of the 2015 Yamaha R1. Now, it's 8% lighter, 9% more horsepower, and it's 33 millimeters narrower. Loads of different parts to make it probably the most powerful R1 engine ever. An example of how trick the engine is, check out these titanium conrods and lightweight rocker arms. The standard R1 gets fully adjustable KYB forks, but the top of the line M gets trick electronically adjustable O-lines. Another example of the extent of weight saving that's gone on the new R1 is the 17 litre alloy tank. On the standard R1 it's painted, on the M, polished. The front wheel of the new R1 is 4% lighter than the previous model, the back wheel 11% lighter. Probably the coolest genuine Yamaha accessory for the new R1 is the communication control unit or CCU. Now it comes standard on the top of the line M model, but you can get it as an accessory for the standard R1. But what it does, it allows the rider of the bike to access everything that's happening on the motorcycle. Gear position, throttle position, lean angle, traction, everything. And it does that, it accesses this via all the sensors on the motorcycle. Spent all day here at Sydney Motorsport Park testing the 2015 Yamaha R1. Well, I haven't spent all day testing the bike. Our test rider Alex has. Now, Alex has spent numerous sessions on the standard R1 and also a couple of sessions on the upgraded, the higher spec M model. Now, Alex, 
your first sessions on the uh, the standard R1. What did you think of the engine? The engine for me was the best engine I've ever ridden on. It's best of both worlds, really. It's got the top end power of, say, a Big Bang BMW or Kawasaki. It's also got the torque of the, uh, say, a Ducati or a v Twin V4. And I never rode the previous version of Big Bang, but this new version, I can't fault it. It's just horsepower, easy to ride, and just can't complain. Okay, so you got a chance to go through the different uh, traction control modes, any wheelie, and, and also the, uh, the the rider modes. Tell us about that. What did you think? Yes, I love the adjustability. Like, it, so many traction control limits. First off, we started on traction control three, then as well as wheelie control on full. And for the first couple of sessions, it was good. Then, so I think it was the third session, we moved, put on traction control traction control one which is the least traction control so there was no wheelies and actually made the bike easy to ride you could power stand without it cutting in and out as well as it powers more tractable and you could just steer it better and just phenomenal changes okay now the suspension uh, the uh, standard r1 has adjustable fully adjustable kyb suspension and the m model has the olin's el electronically adjustable forks did you just run the standard R1 with the standard settings all, all the time. Did you make any changes, or did the technicians make any changes, and how did that work? Uh, for me personally, um, the front end to start off with, it was good, was working fine, just felt a bit vague in the front end through the fast corners. So we come in, put some um, compression in the rear, which just to help load up the front. So and that made a big difference. I was quite surprised, but after that, things was handled beautifully. Okay, so let's go to the M model. More horsepower more advanced suspension, $6,000, more money. Is it worth it? Is the bike faster? Does it handle better? Uh, personally, I thought it would be a bit of a gimmick, but electronic suspension, I've rode previous different makes and models with electronic suspension, and they'll be quite stiff, even on the softer settings, but this has got so much adjustability. It's just as good as conventional suspension, but you don't, no tools needed. and. The more power made it actually easier to ride as well. You could be a bit more lazier, use the torque more at your advantage, as well as that suspension just can't fault it. It was that good. Just don't know anything right. So you'd be a fan of the uh, 2015 R1? Yeah. yeah, definitely. The 2015 Yamaha YZF R1 will set you back $23,495 in black, red or blue. The limited edition YZF R1M, 29995 now the 2015 Yamaha R1 has a massive range of accessories, some genuine, some not, that you can buy for your bike. So let's take a look at a few. Now Yamaha has gone into a global business relationship with Akrapovic and as a result you can buy a range of different exhausts for your Yamaha through your Yamaha dealer. Now first up we've got a slip-on muffler, it's titanium, it's just under $1100 and one cool thing about it is it's all laser etched here, it's even got R1 on there, pretty cool. Then you can go to two racing systems. One's the race line system, and or racing line system, and it's got a stainless steel header pipes, and it's got a carbon fiber muffler, just under $2,600. One step further is the evolution line full system. Titanium header pipes, carbon fiber muffler, just under $3,300. Now there's two accessory screens available for the new R1. Now this one here is called the sprint screen, and it's got a slight smoke to it. $170. You can also get an endurance screen, which is 55 millimetres higher, get it in clear or smoke, and it's $188. For when you're not taking a pillion, you can always replace that pillion seat with a single seat cow. Comes in three different colours to suit your bike. It's $296. Now, it's easy to do. It's a simple key operation to take that pillion seat off. You put the single seat cowl on, a couple of screws, job done. Makes the back end look super sleek. One of Yamaha's genuine accessories for the, the new R1 is this frame slider kit. Now, it's a two-piece sort of affair, a steel mounting kit alloy slider, and you can see it's designed to not only look sleek, but to give good protection in the event of a crash. Now, it's easy to fit, it's $296, and you don't have to cut any of the fairing to mount it. Another genuine accessory from Yamaha for the new R1, which is unique to this model, is the race stand rear hook. Now it's GP or Moto GP derived and easy to fit. They look fantastic, nice billet alloy, two screws to fit it onto your swing arm, easy to use. 
Simple as that for $99. You can win an awesome Contour Roam 3 action camera with Cycle Talk and Contour. Just go to cycletalk.com.au slash contour to enter and sign up for the Cycle Talk email newsletter while you're there. The Contour cameras will be won every week and we'll announce the winner on next week's show. Where you gonna go when the night is hold? When the stars are black and the ground is cold? Stop dreaming and start riding. Your motorcycle adventures start with Triumph at ProCycles. Get the best of British on a classic Bondville or Thruxton. Tame a tiger in the bush or take the dirt road on an Explorer. Go touring in comfort on a Trophy. Cruise without limits on a Thunderbird. Add some thrills on a Daytona or Speed Triple. Make it happen at ProCycles. Hornsby on Sydney's north side and St Peter's in the south. Harley Davidson is a manufacturer of heavyweight motorcycles for experienced riders. You've had to get that experience on different brands of motorcycles. Couldn't get it on a Harley because up until now, the smallest bike they made was an 883, and that was too big for the learner approved motorcycle scheme. So Harley's now introducing the Street 500. It's a really important bike for the brand because it means that you can start on a Harley and then when you've got the confidence, when you want to, when you can afford it, you can move to a bigger Harley. To build a 500cc bike aimed at that learner commuter market, Harleys had to move them offshore. They couldn't manufacture these in the USA and still put them on the street at $10,000 as they have in Australia. So these bikes are coming out of Asia, in this particular case India. Like almost every major manufacturer, they're building them in multiple places. These are international companies. So what do you get for your $10,000? Well you get a liquid cooled V-twin engine, four valve heads. It looks like it's air cooled with the engine fitting the way it's been done, but it's actually not. Conventional forks, twin shocks, it's not a fancy motorcycle really but it's a very honest motorcycle. It's fairly raw. Steel chassis, traditional Harley style tank, modern controls, and a very easy bike to ride and maneuver. Now the riding position on the new Street 500 is very good. It's not forward, which would be out here, and it's not back, which was here. It's right in the middle, which is a fairly good compromise. It's quite comfortable riding position. And also I think that's really confidence inspiring. Now if you pick the bike up off that, your feet do get in the way a little bit of the foot pegs but you get used to that after a few days. So from that perspective, it works really well. Handlebars, similar story. They're not really high and they're not low, they're just very comfortable. This bike, you can ride it at, at speeds, up to freeway speeds and you don't really feel like you're getting blown off the back. Of course it's only got this tiny little cowling so it's not giving you any weather protection at all, but that's okay. On a summer's day like today, there's nothing better than being out on a bike set up like the Street 500. At the back of the bike, we've got twin shocks. Fairly basic, adjustable down the bottom here for spring preload. So if you're carrying a passenger or you're a bit heavier, you can adjust them up a bit heavier towards the tight end. And if you're a bit of a lighter rider, you can pull them back and, and soften them up. The back here you can carry a passenger, they've got a strap, but there's not the pillion accommodation's not, not massive, but it's a lot better than a lot of learner bikes that are out there. The instrumentation on the Street 500 is pretty basic. It's just a single dial for speed, and inside that is a small LCD for trip meters and your odometer. There's a few idiot lights there, 
but that's about it. Would have been good to see a gear indicator light for, uh, for learners to show what gear you're in, but unfortunately they haven't even done that. Very, very basic. Also up here near the top of the bike is a lockable fuel cap, and that's a very rare thing on a Harley Davidson, but it shows that that Asian and foreign markets demand fuel security. Now Harley Davidson's produced a lot of accessories and options for this machine. Some of them are on this bike. This is a test bike supplied by Harley. This wheel is not standard. It's, a, it's an optional accessory, as are these metal hand grips and the foot pegs, the brake pedal there, and the tip on the back of the exhaust pipe. That's not standard either. So keep in mind, this bike's been optioned up a little bit, but you can buy all these parts from your Harley dealer to make it look like this if you wish to. The Street 500 built urban use. It really suits the urban hipster, somebody who might want to modify their bike up. I mean, straight out of the crate, you won't mind riding it. It looks really nice, but it really does suit changing it, modifying it, getting into the Harley catalogue, maybe even taking it to a custom bike builder and making it your own. And once it is your own, you'll really enjoy getting it around the city, getting through the suburbs and enjoying life on the road. Even when you're stuck in traffic, it's still a lot of fun to ride. So the urban hipsters will love it, and they'll love bringing it to places like this, the Red Baron Lounge Bar, a new place that's opened up in Newcastle, which is where Cycle Talk's produced. And we came here, we love the look of the place, and we think this bike and this style of life is what this machine's all about. But you're not gonna buy a Street 500 just because it's a good commuter or a good urban bike. You're gonna buy it because it stirs your soul. And certainly, Street 500 will do that, especially when you modify it up and make it your own. So I think it really does address that target market. It's the right bike, the right price, for the right audience. I think as that audience gets a little older, they'll be back to their Harley dealer, they'll be throwing their leg over a fat boy or a sportster, having a good look, and wondering, is it better on a bigger bike? But in the meantime, for that first few years, I think the Street 500 will be a very satisfying ride. The March issue of Cycle Talk magazine features the full test of the Harley Davidson Street 500. You can also get more information from harleydavidson.com.au. They're priced at $9,995 right away, and they're available in three colours. Triumph Tiger 750, or TR7RV, Tiger 750 as is the correct name, represents the last gasps of the English motorcycle industry. By 1979, when this bike was built, Triumph was pretty much in its death throes. Sure, the motorcycle, or the Triumph Bonneville 750, or the 750 Twin would go on for a, you know, near enough to another decade, but by 1979 even, this bike was outclassed and outdated by bikes built in Japan, Germany and Italy. The Tiger 750 had quite a bit of competition. Bikes like Honda CBX1000, the BMW R100RS, Suzuki GS1000, Ducati Damar and so on. All of these bikes were light years away in terms of style, performance and reliability than this bike. was on paper. While all those bikes had a lot more horsepower, they also had a lot more weight. So the real world difference between those new pretenders and this outdated Tiger 750 was a lot closer than what you might think it was. In 2015, the Tiger 750 is far from being an outclass classic or club bike. It has a small feel to it. The engine, even though it's only got 50 horsepower, is, feels quite lusty, you might say. The brakes, the disc brakes, work a lot better than the old antiquated drums. And overall, it's a bike, realistically, where you'd feel at home with. And especially if you're a, an older rider, advancing in years and trying to relive your youth somewhat, this bike's a pretty good choice. On the handling side of things, the Tiger 750 is pretty good, especially if you look after the suspension or it's been set upright, and if you've got good rear shocks on it and so on. Being light, it does handle well, 
whether it be going down to the cafe or out in the open road, can, it's quite flickable to, uh, to go through the bends. And keeping up with modern traffic is pretty easy. Also, if you're, let's say, a new person going to the English side of classic motorcycling, this bike's got a left-hand gear change. So don't just think all British classic bikes have got right-hand gear change. They don't. And the single carburetor also makes it life a little bit easier because keeping the engine in tune is just that bit easier too. A bike like this ready to rock and roll will set you back about the 10 grand mark, but it could range anywhere from eight to 12, depending on the condition. But for that sort of money, you get a really nice club bike or a bike you can ride every day if you like. And it really is a good sensible choice to get you into that club game if you've never been there before. But I really enjoyed it. I think it's a great performer, it's light, it's really enjoyable, and I think you'll have a lot of fun too. Read full tests of the Harley-Davidson Street 500, the custom Yamaha SR400, as well as the Ducati 1200S Monster in Cycle Talk Magazine's March issue. Also featuring classic rotary motorcycles, which will be featured in a future episode of Cycle Talk's TV show. The free Cycle Talk magazine is available from better bike shops right around the country, or you can download digital versions to your tablet or iPhone, or read it online. Also in the March issue are posters of Toby Price at the Dakar Rally and the awesome new Yamaha R1. With news, racing and lots more, catch every issue of Cycle Talk magazine. Go to cycletalk.com.au Five Gloves is one of the world's biggest and best manufacturers of motorcycle gloves. They make gloves for road, race, touring, off-road and in both women's and men's sizes. And today we're lucky enough to have Frank Fazio, the CEO of Five Gloves worldwide here in Australia. And um, thanks for coming in, Frank. Now, what makes Five Gloves different to other glove brands? Uh, thanks to you for your invitation. I think the <coughs> most important uh, difference with the Five Glove and the other brand is uh, we are really uh, focused on uh, uh, producing a glove, motorcycle glove. The other brand is global brand, but Five is uh, developing its just glove. And from a couple of years now, we have our own factory. So we are really, really controlling the production uh, quality and uh, every details of the glove. And we are really specialized uh, on the glove, really focus. So how does Five Gloves develop and test new gloves, especially considering you know, you're trying to improve the feel of the glove without compromising the protection? Uh, this is a <coughs> very uh, interesting question. Uh, yes, we are, when we are developing a new glove, we are thinking about the uh, uh, safety, protection first, and uh, fitting because everybody rides his motorcycle with the hand. Mm -hmm. A mix of uh, testing, developing, designing, and uh, for us, 50% uh, of the uh, production for our glove is uh, the fitting. The fitting is very important. Normally, when you try a fiber glove, uh, something special happens uh, for when you ride your bike. Usually, the rider try our glove uh, it's difficult after go back to another brain. Okay, now you've got the, the RFX race glove here. Now this is pretty much a top of the line race yes. glove, but you've developed th these gloves with the help of quite a few big name motorcycle racers, haven't you? Yes, uh, race glove <coughs> uh, was uh, uh, developing uh, in uh, four years. We start with uh, Andrea Dovizioso when he start with the first uh, here in MotoGP, okay. and after we are using uh, all of our riders uh, like uh, Karel Abraham, Anthony West, um, Fabian Foray, the World Championship Sport, and uh, until the, all these riders are not happy, we are uh, modif modify the glove. The mission of my uh, designer was to make the best protective glove in the world, the lighter glove in the world, and. Uh, of course, we don't have to uh, look at the price. So I give the brief is best glove. Okay. Any price, but the best glove for the, the best protection for the riders. 
to make this glove, you have to assemble all together 180 pieces. Mm. So this is a, a big challenge and uh, it makes a big difference uh, with, other, with all the other gloves. And uh, uh, you have to be very uh, careful because uh, uh, to place the protection at the right positioning, to make one glove for riders is not so difficult, but to make for mass production, this is another game. And yeah. uh, uh, the five glove is the same for the rider and for the uh, normal consumer. Exactly the same glove. The only difference for the rider, we make exactly the glove for his personal end. But the material, the leather, the carbon, every, every material is exactly the same. So this is very important for us. Now we've talked a bit about the RFX race glove, the top of the line glove, but Five Gloves also makes a massive range of gloves to suit other conditions and other styles of riding. For example, check out the heated glove. Now if you live in cold climes, perfect. Gloves for ladies, perfectly designed for the small hands of a, a beautiful lady. And if you want to have a look at how big the range is, check that out. Plenty there. Right. But the biggest seller for five gloves is the stunt glove. So Frank, tell us a little bit more about that. Uh, yes, the stunt glove is the best uh, selling glove in Australia and all around the, the world. It's uh, very easy because it's uh, uh, the perfect uh, combination of the five uh, uh, philosophy. So you have a fantastic uh, fitting so you can feel a uh, uh, the, your bike, uh, good protection, so we are protecting the glove at the right uh, positioning, and a great design uh, for a very good price. Yes, I think in Australia is $99, so we give for this price a very good uh, uh, product, I think. So five gloves, great product, great price. You can find them in all good motorcycle stores right throughout Australia. And for more information, go to www.motonational.com.au.